Hello, it's Maria Burke here with you and today I'm working on this painting. Um, this is the image I used that I uploaded onto my laptop. It's a photograph I took myself at the Cahirmi Horse Fair and this is the final uh, piece or study that I created and today I'm going to talk you through it and uh, just let you know how I went through this process of painting. So um, as you can see, I put down firstly, put down a red ground. Um, it's just a very, you can see a very rough coat in acrylic paint. It's not even dry. The red background there is not even dry. It's kind of a, an ochre uh, yellow in it as well. Um, so it, it, I don't, didn't even have to leave it dry. I'm still using acrylic paints. Uh, to just block in the background and I use the paint like brush like like you would draw like a pencil um, so I'm using it to outline the drawing rather than using um, a pencil or using charcoal or um, something else and you probably wonder why I'm not using a pencil wouldn't it be easier to use the pencil and then come back and paint over it and not do such a messy underpainting but for me it's all about um, if I, yeah it the the painting what I'm doing with the brush marks here is I'm learning from this doing this background painting and I can change it just as easily as I would with a pencil and a rubber you know, if you make a mistake with a pencil, you get a rubber and you rub it out. But I can change this just as easily because the acrylic paint is dry in a few minutes and I can move things around, paint over them. Um, like right now, I'm, ch I'm changing the position of her head. Her head was too far to the right, this girl on the horse. So I moved it over to the left just really quickly. Now, this is a speed. <laughs> I've speeded this demo up. Um, but it, it was quickly. I mean, it was done. This was done very, very quickly, this underpainting. And um, the horse's head was a bit too large. I'm bringing that down in size now. And also, it, it saves time. You know, if, if I was still working, I'd still be working on the pencil sketch by now, and I wouldn't have all this blocking in that I've done, all this colour laid down. So for me, it's a very economical way, I suppose, of uh, working on the painting. I'm getting two things for, for instead of one. I'm getting paint put down and getting the drawing done. And I just find it a very, it's very free. It's fr and it means I'm getting into the painting faster I'm blocking down areas and I'm getting to look at not just the drawing but the background as well so this painting actually was quite a struggle for me um, you've probably seen all the other paintings I've put up on on this um, YouTube channel and on my site um, just the other paintings were quite straightforward and simple to do, but this one, there's always going to be one somewhere that's going to be a challenge. And the challenge in this painting was there was too much going on. Yeah, I stopped the underpainting there. So that was the underpainting and this reddish brown colour is where I've started working in oils. And the painting just, it just dried, the acrylics dried very, very quickly. So I was able to come back to the horse's body and work on that maybe while other parts of the acrylic were drying. But they're so fast to dry and I was putting them on thinly anyway. So um, it, a lot of people use a hair dryer, you know, if, if you had put on a lot of paint and you wanted to keep it with the acrylic, you could just get a hair dryer and you could go further with your underpainting. You can nearly finish the painting in acrylics and then do your final part in oils. But a lot of uh, acrylic paint today, now I haven't used the top quality acrylic paints, I suppose. I'm just used to using oils and I have a large supply of oil paints that I need to use. 
Um, but maybe someday I will try and do an entire painting um, with acrylic paints. I might invest in some better quality paints and, and see how they work out um, as a, a, to do the entire painting. Because what I hear anyway is that the, the, more, the better quality acrylic paints are very, very good. But oils, you just get that glossiness. You have the, I suppose, that oily finish, um, that resonance, the transparency, um, the fact that you can glaze. Glazing is just mixing oil paint with um, either linseed oil or a mixture of linseed oil or just white spirits and putting a wash over something to bring, to change the tone of the painting. So yeah, it's, and you can build up layer over layer that way. And the neg negative side of the oil paints then is that they're slower to dry. So if you make a mistake, you're going to have to scrape it off if you want to keep working quickly, or you're going to have to wait sometimes. Depending on the colour of the paint, you might have to wait for a few days for it to dry. The white paint can take a few days, whereas the darker colours I find are faster to dry. So yeah, um, I'm putting in a figure into the foreground of this painting here. It's the neck and shoulders of a man. And just to show you the original shot of the painting, the photograph that I was working from, that man uh, the head of this man on the right hand side was much more dominant in the painting and you saw less of the horse the horse's face wasn't visible he was blocked out by the man so I'm using other photographs of the horse fair to get the detail of the horse's face as well. So I'm not just working from that one photo that I showed you. I'm working from a few others as well that I've kind of mishmashed together to get the horse's face. So it's quite complicated what I was doing and I'm working on a very small picture. It's only a few inches. It's about six feet or six inches wide by about four inches high. It's tiny. And I really intended this to be a very quick um, study or like almost like a thumbnail, um, a study for a picture, you know, but, it, you know, obviously it is a painting in its own right, but I wanted it to be, I really think I love this image of the girl on the horse riding through the street of this town. Um, and the horse fair takes place it takes up the whole of Butterbun town, as far as I can see. It takes up the main street. It really it is one or you know one main street. There's another street forking off it, and those two streets are entirely taken up with the horse fair on the twelfth of July every summer. I think it's the twelfth of July, and uh, I was there over the last two summers. And I just love this image. You know, there's a beautiful uh, Irish song called She Moved Through the Fair. So when I was looking at this picture of this girl and, you know, when people are up on the horses, they look very proud. And I was thinking of this image of the girl just moving through the fair on her horse above everybody. But just how unusual that is in this day and age to be able to ride through a busy town where people are selling things and there's markets out in the streets and the streets are crowded full of people and that you have that freedom just to move on your horse um, through the fair, through the streets. I just think it was a beautiful image. So I thought I just liked the idea of painting this, but when I started working on it, um, I realised I was putting far too much into this small little picture. And I really got bogged down, as you can see in the background. 
and I spend a lot of time um, trying to sort out that background. There's on the left, there's a chip van. It's either a chip van, it's some sort of fast food stall and there's people hanging around outside it. And then beyond that, there's the sky and I think there's the steeple of a church and there's some roofs of buildings. And then right behind the girl, there's another white van that was very boring. It was a very plain shape. So I was trying to make that look a bit more interesting, um, that plain white shape in the background and put the man here. I kept him in the foreground, the man where you can see his collar and his blue shirt on the right hand side. But as I went on, um, I think at this point, as I'm working on it, I'm not even fully aware because I hadn't taken a break to stand back and look at what was going on. But definitely the yellow isn't working on the ground. And for me, the chip van on the left hand side is not working. It's far too busy. It's like this big box shape that's kind of sticking out of her shoulder and it's taking the attention away from the girl. And I'm, I'm also looking, when I, when I look back at the painting, when I had to think about it, I left it overnight and I came back to it the following day. And when I thought about it, I was wondering about the positioning. Had I positioned her well? Um, there is this sort of artist rule that you don't put something bang into the center of the painting. It's, it's more interesting to move uh, your, your main focus off to one side or another. And, you know, all these rules are made to be broken. But I think um, the horse is, yeah, she is slightly to the right hand side, but she is very centered as well. Um, and I, I was thinking about the composition. Perhaps if I was redoing it, I might change the composition slightly, move her maybe further off to the right hand side and leave some empty space on the left. Um, but as it is now, and um, this is why I'm painting. This is the whole reason I'm doing this. Um, these YouTube um, uh, videos of my work is so that I can learn from my mistakes. Um, it's giving me an opportunity to look back and review where I'm going wrong in my paintings and to learn from them. And, um, and this is a painting that I struggled with. So I, I just think it's good to share what the struggle was and it might help somebody else just look at how a composition can go wrong and um, and of course it can all be fixed and this this happens with every painting you're going back and forth you're taking things out you're putting things back in you're moving things around and you're just looking at what why isn't this picture working how can i make it work so the big issue was that chip fan on the left hand side, that box that I'm working on now. So now I'm obviously realizing there's something wrong and I am lightening the colors. And I'm trying to deal with that yellow as well, changing that yellow under the girl. And uh, then I thought, yeah, I'd bring some of the yellow in above that might make it look but all the time I was aware something isn't right about this painting. Even though I like the horse and I like the girl. Um, but it's, it was completely the background was the big issue here. It's, there's just far too much going on. So eventually when I came back to work on it, and you'll see this afterwards, you'll see I took out that shoulder of the man on the right and his neck, I took all that out, took him out, uh, which simplified the painting, and I took the chip van out on the left, and I simplified those houses in the background as well. 
Um, I think I took the church steeple out, but I left the man on the left, that figure there on the left that who's walking out of the painting. I left him in. So you can see now yeah, I'm adding in some details of the um, the horse's head and the riding gear. Just adding the, the little details with this thinner brush. So yeah, if I was going back again, and I think I will do another version, um, because I just love this idea of, yeah, here I'm adding highlights, which is helping. It's helping to bring out... Um, one of the things that I, I'm really interested in doing is having light in these paintings just keeping them alive and not not stiff and dead and I think I spent a lot of time working on this so I've speeded this up um, but really I spent I think it was an hour and 50 minutes something like that working on this tiny painting which was far too long so a lot of the life was going out of it the more I worked on the background the more it just overworked it's getting and gone back and forth and uh, really struggling with it. So here I scraped back some of the paint, um, just wasn't happy at all with it. And now um, I've speeded up this a good bit now, this section of the painting. I started, I want to have the full of that horse's head in and not for him to be blocked out by this man's shoulder. So I'm bringing out more of the details on the horse, focusing more on him. And I'm going to obliter obliterate the man. <laughs> and here, yeah, I'm doing some work on the background again. Yes, yeah, so I'm painting out that man on the right-hand side. Even though I did like him in the picture, but I just it was just all too much. There was way too much going on for such a small picture. Really, when something is so small, it needs to be simple. And that is a huge thing about a painting is you can become a slave to the photograph. And it's it's not the best photograph. Um, I, I take photographs when I went to the fair. I took video as well, and I took a lot of stills from the video and I just uploaded them onto my laptop. And um, so I just look at the laptop, at the image, and it's quite big on my laptop. So it's, it's a really handy way to work. But you can become a slave to a photograph. And I think at the very end, I, I just turned off the photograph. I stopped looking at it. See, I'm really struggling with that chip van now. I'm lightening it up. I'm moving the figures around in it. I'm trying to deal with it but all the time it was too much it was too busy and really what I needed was to lead the eye into the girl but I think what was happening is you can see the horse and the girl but all the time you're wondering what's going on over there <laughs> my eye was being dragged away to the fussiness of that corner on the left so I actually learned a lot from doing this painting um, I learned a lot about just not really keeping the composition simple. And sometimes you don't, you don't know, you won't learn that until you've actually done it, until you've actually started working on a picture and put a lot of time into it and you go, you just realise, no, that just is not working. So, yeah. Here I am just still struggling away with that, that corner. It took so much of my time working back and forth on the background. But in the end it did work. I'm quite happy with the way it has worked out. And you'll, I'll show you that in a, in a few minutes. You'll see the final, um, the end product. So yeah, don't forget to, um, to like and subscribe. Um, 
if you like my work or give me comments. Tell me if you've gone through these type of struggles with your work. And it is the great thing about painting. You know, if you do something wrong, you can just come back and paint it out. It's not all over. And there was just, I liked the horse in this painting. Horse worked from the beginning and the girl more or less. Um, so I think I will come back and repaint this as a larger painting. Um, I also have a WordPress site. You can go on to artistmariaburke.wordpress.com to see more of my paintings and what I'm doing. And I'm uploading to YouTube um, at least once a week. And the reason I'm doing it is that I love talking about my work. Um, and it's not that I'm trying to say that it's perfect. It is not. As you can see, um, there's, I have problems. I have, uh, and that's what all artists do. They deal with their problems and um, on, on the canvas. So I like to be able to talk. Maybe other people have other ways of dealing with um, their struggles with their paintings. So I just felt that, you know, I, I made a commitment to myself that I would paint one painting a week for the next 12 months and maybe go on longer because I really feel making that commitment to my work, painting one a week, um, it will absolutely improve what I'm doing. And I know a lot of artists have done that. They've made that commitment and, um, and they have seen, I've actually one artist, I've watched her, uh, she did it for years and you can see her, just, a, just a vast improvement in her work as she went on that journey of painting a painting one a week. Some, some artists paint daily, they paint a picture daily, uh, but they would be more people who are working in pastels or some medium that's, that's um, I suppose, a faster medium or a watercolour artist. So, so that's my goal is to do one a week. And if I just made that commitment to myself um, in a few months time, I might totally forget that I made that commitment <laughs> and I might just give up. Whereas if I'm doing it on YouTube, um, I think there's a greater chance that I'm going to stick with it because I've made a public commitment and uh, and I hope that I'll, I'll live up to it. So yeah, hope that people get something out of this, that it's not just me. And the other reason is that um, a few years ago, I had an exhibition. Um, I exhibited in, in a gallery, um, maybe about six pieces. And the whole six pieces sold really, really quickly. And was really, I was really happy with that work. And I went home and I was thrilled that uh, with the news that all the paintings had sold and then I wanted to continue painting that way and I couldn't. I couldn't remember how I had done it and um, so this is a way for me to, to keep a record of what I'm doing. So if I do something good I can look back and go, OK, that's how I did it. And it, yeah, it is very good for me to look back and analyse what I'm doing. Even if I'm only talking to myself, but I know there's a lot of people watching. And so thank you to everybody who's uh, following my work and who subscribed. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. And it's great to have your company. It really is. And I hope that through me making all my mistakes in public here, that, uh, that it will help others as well. It'll help you. So as you can see, that background is just, I'm not happy with it. So in a few minutes, um, I, I did turn off the camera, I have to say, because I was really struggling. And I did a few, I left it dry for a day or two. And then I came back and I made some adjustments. I took out the chip fan. I left in that man that I'm working on there. I left him in. And I just took out the chip fan on the left. All that 
stuff there on the left hand side. I kind of left in some of the figures and I just simplified it down. I didn't do a lot of work off camera. Uh, it was very little, but I put in some marks um, and some gestural sort of background brushwork to point towards the girl and point towards the horse. So rather than the background taking away and distracting you from the main focus of the painting, I think in the end, um, it was literally just brushed out some of those lines. It was very little actually, it was just, I brushed out a little bit of that chip van and uh, just simplified the top left-hand corner of the painting. That's basically what I did. Um, and yeah, the, the trick is just not to be a slave to a photograph because photographs can be very busy, they can be very over cluttered, everything is in a photograph and when it comes to painting we need to just simplify, simplify, that is a key thing and think about the focus of the painting. So there it is, there's the final piece, you can see I took away the chip fan and it's just looking a lot more simple, it's just really a suggestion of a background. And here's the main painting. Thank you for, or here's the photograph that I work from. As you can see, a very cluttered photo. Thank you for joining me today. It's great to have you with me. And I'll talk to you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.